It goes without saying, dinosaurs are cool. The Melbourne Museum recently acquired one of the most complete Triceratops skeletons in the world. So naturally, my wife and I had to go and check it out. That's pretty cool. The exhibit was amazing. I think part of what struck me was its size. It's two meters tall and six meters long, and this skeleton weighs close to a metric ton. That's a thousand kilograms. But the detail of the fossil also struck me. You could see the impressions of where tendons would be throughout its back, and there were 85% of the bones there, including an extremely fine skull. This is an awesome find. This has been thoroughly studied with different scientists and with the use of various imaging technologies to teach us about the workings of a Triceratops. This particular specimen was excavated from under three and a half metres of sandstone in Montana. Montana is nowhere near Melbourne. Melbourne Museum and the Victorian government as well as a few partners bought the specimen for three million dollars. But that got me thinking, who owns dinosaur bones? Who's receiving the money? And if I started digging in my backyard, would I own the bones that I found? Today, we're going to be talking about dinosaurs, their bones, and who owns them. Today we are going to be talking about fossils. Fossils comes from the Latin word fossus, mean to be dug up. Fossils are the remnants of traces of life from the past. And they're not just bones. Fossils are also the impressions of footprints, animals trapped in amber, and occasionally even soft tissue. We've not found much dinosaur soft tissue just because of the sheer amount of time between the animal's death and contemporary times, but occasionally animals that were around during the Ice Age will be found with soft tissue still intact. In June of this year, 2022 for example, a baby mammoth was uncovered with hair and skin very much still intact. It was uncovered by a gold miner in Yukon in Canada. Paleontologists who were able to study it we're thrilled. When we talk about dinosaur bones, we're generally talking about what happens to the bones through a process called permineralization, a process by which an organism is preserved shortly after its death so that it is not affected by the weather or taken away by scavengers. Then over a very long time, groundwater containing minerals will soak into the bones inside the cells and over time crystallize turning what was there into stone. So who owns the dinosaur bones? Well, I'm not a lawyer, but I will go with a classic lawyer line of, it depends. It depends mostly on where the fossils were found. There's no international government saying what has to be done or the laws around dinosaur bones. So it's left to each country to decide what happens with their own dinosaur bones. So things will vary from place to place. Let's talk about some different examples. In Australia, the rules vary slightly from state to state and territory to territory. But generally, you're allowed to fossic for fossils if you have the landowner's permission. Fossic meaning to search the surface for things. You might include some hand digging. So could I go into my backyard, start fossicking for fossils and keep what I find? Well, yes, so long as I get my landlord's permission because I am currently renting. If on crown land or public land, generally there will be more processes involved and you will need to go through and get licenses and permits depending on which state or territory you are in. And fossils found in national parks must be left there. You can't search for fossils in national parks to collect. Frankly, I was surprised to learn that if I find a fossil on land that I own, it is mine. The United States of America has a similar situation where, generally speaking, if you find a fossil on your land, it's yours. 
There are an increasing list of countries that are introducing restrictions about what you can and can't do with fossils. For example, countries such as Chile, Argentina and Mongolia have introduced restrictions that it's now illegal to export fossils. If a fossil is found within those countries, it must stay within those countries. It's considered part of the cultural development of the country and therefore is of a great value. So to answer the question, who owns the dinosaur bones? And before you go fossicking, make sure that you check your local laws about this because there is no time within this video to go through all of the countries and what they do slightly differently. But generally speaking, and check before you do this, but generally speaking, if you find a fossil on land that you own, you own the fossil. In many places, you can do whatever you want with it, which can be problematic. Let's talk about the problems that paleontology has with private collecting and selling of fossils. Paleontologists spend their careers seeking to find out more about what life was like in the past. And for study to be successful, they need lots of information. There is so much data that goes into this study. It's more than just looking at dinosaur bones. There is so much data that is collected in order for findings to be reproducible. If you're missing pieces of data like where it's found, the bone that you've got is not very useful. So this is a delicate process and it requires expert oversight. For paleontologists to be able to expertly excavate, document and study the fossils is essential. But dinosaurs are very cool. Who wouldn't want to own a dinosaur skeleton or an, a fossil? Well, the answer is that lots of people want a piece of the action. Let's talk about Tyrannosaurus rexes. And Tyrannosaurus rexes are one of the most iconic dinosaurs, partly due to their appearance in the Jurassic Park film franchise, but also of just how cool they are. And I'm not alone in the opinion that T-Rexes are awesome. And there are many people with far greater wealth than I have who are interested in acquiring T-Rex skeletons. In 2009, the Tyrannosaurus rex skeleton, affectionately known as Samson, was sold to a private buyer in Las Vegas for an unknown price, but it's estimated to be between 2 million US dollars and 8 million US dollars, but it may have gone for more than 10 million US dollars. The buyer is unknown, and Samson has gone somewhere into a private collection. A little more recently, Stan, the T-Rex skeleton, was sold at auction for 31.8 million US dollars in 2020. That price tag was staggering for many scientists and it raised some alarm bells about where the future of fossil collection might be heading because the prices were going up. Elephant bird eggs are typically partially fossilized eggs from the elephant bird, which was a large bird that lived in Madagascar and it went extinct somewhere between the 12th and 17th century. So not even prehistoric. Humans saw these. Marco Polo wrote about it in his diaries. But their eggs often sold for between 30,000 and 40,000 US dollars around a decade ago. But more recently, there are examples of elephant bird eggs going for upwards of 100,000 US dollars. That increase has only happened within a decade and that increase is far more than just inflation. People are interested in life in the past. They think it's cool and they want a piece of the action. I can't blame them. There are celebrities who are interested in this as well. Leonardo DiCaprio, Russell Crowe and Nicolas Cage have all been known to be acquirers and collectors of Fossils. Nicolas Cage, by the way, is also a huge fan of the T-Rex. In 2007, he purchased a skull at auction, and it turns out that that skull was illegally smuggled out of Mongolia. Nick Cage wasn't to know this. The auction house gave him a certificate of authenticity, but when it came out that it was illegally exported from Mongolia, Nick Cage agreed to give it back, which good on Nick. That would have been disappointing, I think, to find out. Anyway, what scientists are worried about is that there's a rapidly growing industry around fossils. There are more and more people who aren't scientists who are digging for fossils, collecting them, and then selling them on. These private diggers are typically not interested in the paleontology, but are interested in selling the dinosaur bones at an increasing price tag. There's also a problem with fossils being excavated illegally, and 
a black market of fossil trade, especially out of those countries where it's illegal to export them. When a private excavator sells to a private buyer, often paleontologists don't even know about it. A dinosaur is taken out of the ground and sold before scientists have any idea of what's going on, which means that there are discoveries that we might be missing. And then even if a scientist were to get their hands on it at a later time, a lot of the possible information learned is lost because of all the different data that needs to be collected along the way. If specialized care isn't taken throughout the whole process, the possible things that we can learn have been jeopardized. The rise in prices of dinosaurs also meaning that educational institutions and museums are becoming less and less able to acquire dinosaur bones. It makes the $3 million price tag that Melbourne Museum paid for the Triceratops look like a bargain. It's also not as easy for museums to acquire fossils as it is for private collectors, at least not in contemporary times, but more on that in a moment. Melbourne Museum put the Triceratops on display in 2022, this year, but it actually found out about the skeleton in 2018. And then there was a lot of paperwork to do, lots of processes, lots of due diligence checks to make sure that they were acquiring the skeleton ethically and responsibly. Many museums have a strict code of ethics about acquiring new artifacts. And this is often given out by the International Council of Museums to ensure that there is scientific rigor that's being adhered to, and also that there aren't any ethical boundaries being crossed. Because there have certainly been ethical boundaries crossed in the past. Many European colonizer countries are now facing the countries that they colonized because they took dinosaurs from when they were colonizing them back to their home countries. But now the countries that they colonized are wanting their dinosaur bones back. Many of these countries now have thriving paleontology programs programs with paleontologists wanting to study dinosaurs from their country. Fossil ownership can be complex and there are lots of things to consider. Generally speaking, if you find a dinosaur bone on your land, it's yours. But the popularity of dinosaurs is creating an interesting challenge for scientists in that the private market has just skyrocketed, making it difficult for paleontologists to get their hands on it, or sometimes even be aware of a find before it gets sold to a private buyer. And this jeopardizes what can be studied. I don't want to demonize fossil collectors here though. If I had an extra $30 million, do you think I would want a T-Rex skeleton? I absolutely would. Dinosaurs are extremely cool. However, that kind of money could be used for far better things, even within the field of paleontology. The kind of money that Stan went for just a couple of years ago could have been used to fund dozens of paleontology digs or several paleontology research centers in perpetuity. For me, it would be a real shame if after millions of years of these dinosaur bones lying in the ground, that in a short space of time, humans have exploited them for profit and financial gain without adequately studying them. It would be a shame if all of this learning is lost because scientists weren't able to get their hands on them and study them thoroughly because they were cool and went to a private collector. But I'm not gonna ask you to not go searching for fossils or to purchase fossils if that's something that you would like to do. But I do ask that you do so responsibly. Many museums will be able to actually direct you to local digs that are happening where you can volunteer as a research assistant under the supervision of paleontologists and participate in this scientific process. Dinosaurs are pretty cool and it's amazing that we're able to study fossils to learn about what they were like and what life on planet Earth was like in the past. It's amazing. If you're ever in Melbourne, I do recommend that you check out the Triceratops exhibit at Melbourne Museum. It is fantastically displayed and I'm so pleased that this amazing specimen has landed in an educational institute to be displayed to the public and to be learned from by the experts. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you found it interesting, enjoyable, and that you learned something. If you'd like to do any further readings, please feel free to check out the resources that I use to make this video. There is a link to a document in the description below. If you'd like to see more videos about things which fill me with a sense of wonder and curiosity, please consider subscribing to That's Pretty Cool. This world is an amazing place full of interesting things and wonders if we take a moment to slow down and look a little more closely. Thank you once again for watching. Take care, stay curious, and I will see you next time.